Um, I don't, I'd like to turn it over to you. Would anybody, do I have to take Kathleen? Can I hear your thoughts? Okay. Um, we don't need to take that now, do we? Right, can you put your hands up? I'll do it in two loads. One, two, three, four, five. Can you be quiet? Sharp. Thank you very much. Um, it's, it's really a question to Kelly. Um, it's so obvious that what you're doing is incredibly valuable. Um, thank you. Arts Council don't do that. <laughs> but yes, thank you. <laughs> but the question is, how did you get the credibility to start it off? Uh, the reason I ask is because I very much want to start a project in Oxford through a museum, a collection of modern art. And I have a wonderful steering group of, of, of people who are serious and very valuable in the, in the field. But the question is wiping that credibility so people actually realise that not only can you do it, but you're going to do it. So how do you get to that point? Um, I was going to say that we have in Oxfordshire a wonderful little organisation called the Oxfordshire Youth Arts Partnership, and they place young people um, in the aim of being leaders. And the one thing that they need is a partner institution to teach them the leadership skills uh, across the arts. They work with diverse young people. And um, they work with my university, which is Buckinghamshire New University, one which isn't Oxford, one of the smaller, less known places, uh, a major provider for people to work in management across music and the arts. We have the National School of Furniture there. Um, my question is to you, um, when you say we do the training, who are you partnered with to give these young people the skills that Oxford Youth Arts Partnership get through my teaching? Thank you. Behind. Something behind um, yeah, I was just wondering whether you thought that um, private, private funding could sometimes give, well, can give the arts a negative image, especially from uh, some corporate contributors. The LSE problem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, which is very defensible. I think there's somebody close to the back. Yes, my name is David Lord and I've just been involved for the first time putting on an exhibition at the Museum of London but I had to sort of guarantee half the funding and unfortunately <laughs> they came with it. But what I want to ask Curran is that um, when you're trying to attract young people and obviously people that aren't in the loop so to speak, how do you balance getting the good and the great on board, but avoiding the sort of snobbery and the sort of cutting edge you want to retain, but these people may bring in money. Uh, how do you balance that? How, how you compose your board? Compose the board. How you compose the board? Um, hi, um, I think that I just wanted to say about Karen about thinking more internationally in terms of your funding. So I think that's a really important point actually because I was the only English person at Oxford doing art history, and um, I've been to three of the top ten universities in the world, and I now can't afford to be unemployed. Um, I am in your bracket of age groups. We also can't afford to work for free, like you said, um, which means I will be leaving the country to look for employment. And I think we're investing in universities, which don't have British people at them. We're investing in unemployed British people from ethnic minorities, which means that the people who manage to squeeze themselves through the universities and our economy are now either working in fields which they don't want to be in, or are not leaving or making the most of their education, or they're leaving the country. And that's the point of that. Thank you. 